Hey everyone, Harry here to give you the crazy uh, topsy-turvy events in the Texas SB4 case in the Supreme Court and actually the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and even the District Court over the last month or more, but especially the last couple days. All right, this is the uh, law, a really, I'd say, pernicious law that uh, Texas has passed purporting to give them the authority to uh, arrest uh, immigrants coming in from over the border, to, de to deport them, charge them with state crimes. Now, um, the Supreme Court in a uh, case uh, in from Arizona just a few years ago held that you can't uh, do that. It's, a, it's illegal for a state to try. It should be obvious that it's illegal for a state to try because this is the federal government's lookout, like classic paradigmatic lookout to police uh, the borders and handle immigration. Texas has tried this gambit of saying, well, we have special powers when there is war and we are at war with uh, immigrants and have to do all these things. So um, the law not only weeds in the Fed's garden, you, you know, com completely and unabashedly, but it also causes all kinds of problems were to go into effect. First, you'd have federal and state agents in the field with different um, law enforcement commands may be tripping over each other. That is always, uh, you, you learn this as, as U.S. attorney, you want to do everything possible to avoid a uh, confluence of different legal authorities out there. You see it on TV when the FBI says we're taking this case, but when it's effectively, um, you know, cowboyish uh, state authorities told to, uh, you know, go and arrest folks and the feds be damned. And if it is, that's a recipe for problems, you know, and, and even danger in the field to agents. That's one. Two, it's a recipe for real, really, um, abrogation, uh, that, that's, uh, maybe the legal term would be screwing, uh, uh, immigrants because, uh, they have certain rights. Those rights are defined by federal law. They may have good claims of asylum, for example. It may be hard to, in, under the current system, to get to them. All that's true. There are things to do to, to try to repair a system that's been fairly broken for a long time. Nevertheless, if Texas comes in and just decides what, what this or that uh, immigrant uh, has the rights to do and, and kicks them back to Mexico, that's that's an abridgment of their rights. It's a problem for foreign relations. Uh, Mexico and we are really uh, doing a lot of work together as partners to try to police the border. Indeed, stops were up some 50% over the last month. And, you know, Mexico needs to have, to know who are we dealing with? Who is the government? With whom are we acting in concert? Uh, and in fact, they've said well, they don't, they won't recognize Texas just, uh, you know, making, taking action with, uh, immigrants coming over the border. And then fourth, we have in, uh, enshrined in the Constitution, Article six, the supremacy of federal law. And, uh, to abridge uh, it, uh, but is, is an offense to the Constitution itself. So it's all kinds of reasons that Texas shouldn't be doing this unless the Supreme Court issues a, you know, crazy ass, uh, ruling somehow changing the entire system and, and authorizing states to, to undertake this action. It would be, um, nuts and, and totally activist. Um, presumably it would come from the, the uh, most conservative members of the court. But okay, if they do that, that would be the game changer, but they haven't done that. So um, nevertheless, Texas was authorized, uh, at least for a time, in these, in these crazy last 48 hours to effectuate its law, and let me explain. So the district court law, SB4, was en entered and passed in Texas, to great fanfare and kind of uh, macho posturing by their governor, Greg Abbott. 
uh, and uh, they, a suit was brought and the district court said, yeah, well, this is like illegal. They're the, you know, Arizona versus United States uh, from a few years ago settles this pretty clearly and entered a stay. It then went up to the Fifth Circuit and I'm leaving out even some of the procedural kind of tortuous turns, but um, the Fifth Circuit uh, on uh, a little less than a month ago entered a so-called administrative stay of the district court order. So an administrative stay is basically a stay, a temporary stay to de- while you decide whether to enter a full stay. We've seen that in the Supreme Court today when a justice, you know, uh, freezes the linebackers to submit a, a stay request to the entire court. So this w- administrative stay was uh, supposedly the Fifth Circuit, you know, give, give them breathing room to decide whether to stay the district court um, order. That lasted um, for weeks while, um, uh, and, and until a a, a couple days ago when the United States moved in the Supreme Court to um, dissolve that stay. And the Supreme Court, so first it goes to Alito, uh, who is the circuit justice for the Fifth Circuit, which by the way, the Fifth Circuit, there's so, a few conservative circuits and then there's the Fifth Circuit. The Fifth Circuit is um, considered not just very right wing, but, but Lawless might might be a little bit of a strong word, but not too strong. I mean, they really we're going to see it this year. In fact, you'll look at the end of term um, summaries and people will talk about how the Supreme Court wasn't all conservative and look how they reigned in the Fifth Circuit. And indeed, they will reign in the Fifth Circuit. But that's just because the Fifth Circuit is like on Mars and they'll, um, you know, um, in some important cases, they'll be pushing back against them. Anyway, so this thing is pending and now goes to the Supreme Court. And in um, a order entered yesterday, um, six members of the Supreme Court, we don't know exactly, we actually don't know exactly what six they are because Kavanaugh and Barrett uh, entered an, uh, an opinion and then the no, no other word from the other four. So it, it could have been three of the four. But anyway, Kavanaugh and Barrett say, you know, we are not we are not going to disturb this stay by the Fifth Circuit because it's an administrative stay. It's a stay just for the purpose of deciding whether to do a full stay. And we says Barrett never interfere with those sort that sort of internal procedural nicety by a court of appeals. Um, uh, and uh, but they say basically if the court of appeals doesn't get its act together and very quickly you can come back and um, try again for to stay their so-called administrative stay. Are you with me so far? The Fifth Circuit basically says the, the law can go into effect because we are putting an administrative stay on the district court stay of the law while we decide whether to put a longer stay on the district court uh, decision to block the law. All right. This prompted um, a few dissents from the progressive trio of Jackson, Sotomayor, and Kagan. And, um, uh, you know, Kagan made, makes the point of like, maybe there's a use for administrative stays and maybe we keep our hands off generally. But when something goes a month, um, you know, there's, there's got to be a way to overturn it. And in fact, I, I would have put it e- in even stronger terms. Kavanaugh and Barrett themselves, um, make it clear that there's the power there to do it. Uh, they just want to give a little bit more time to the Fifth Circuit, but why? Uh, and the, you know, the real question that, that, um, their opinion, uh, implicates is, yeah, it's an administrative stay. So what? It's got the same effect as a regular stay. And while it was in place, the things that I talked about, the the, uh, confusion in the field, the abridging of immigrants' uh, rights, the the, uh, damage to foreign relations, the uh, the damage to and uh, temporary suspension of the supremacy clause, 
all come into play. What what are the, those offenses to the Constitution? You know, next to this, um, uh, what kind of un, unspoken notion that administrative stays? You let you let them police their business. To me, it may you know the, these dangers can eventuate in a in, in a half hour when uh, if you have Texas and uh, the United States clashing in the field over who's got the authority. We know who has the authority, and this is the a Supreme Court and a Constitution we are expounding, and administrative stay, who who cares? The, uh, the, the Fifth Circuit had left it so that Supreme Federal law is not um, uh, governing, and that leads to all kinds of possible mischief. All right, that's where things stood as of last night, but hang with me because now the Fifth Circuit took the uh, hint, the strong hint, from Barrett and Kavanaugh, and they immediately, they'd been lollygagging with their administrative stay, they immediately, A, set the argument on a fuller stay for this morning, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning, this all happened last night, and be entered a real um, stay until that was done, something that the Supreme Court, if it wanted to, could could uh, change on an emergency um, basis, but they're now okay. We're gonna we're gonna actually look at and do and give you an argument on the merits and do it this morning. And we uh, we take the hint that we we don't want to get uh, kicked in the pants by Barrett and Kavanaugh. So for now, sanity or um, supremacy of federal law has been restored. Um, but that's a they you know take a major step back. What Texas is trying to do is outrageous in its effects and completely contrary to to, to existing law, and not just uh, the text of the Constitution, but the but a dead on ruling by the Supreme Court. So that's the that's the bigger drama with SB four. But then, in addition, um, the you know so called center of the court, Barrett and Kavanaugh indulged a situation where, yes, temporarily, although with no particular boundary to that temporary status, um, federal law at the border was suspended and text and well, in the sense that Texas could um, execute its own um, legal regime that seems a unconstitutional and B had never been approved. Uh, by uh, any federal court, so uh, that to me, it's it wasn't it's not just legally wrong, but it is um, their willingness to do it and kind of make light of the very weighty considerations that, um, in this case, really undergird uh, federal law struck uh, struck me as a as a bad, mischievous, and and false move. And the um, response from Barrett and Kavanaugh, well, it's just, you know, for now, uh, really uh, seems very flimsy given the um, what we're talking about. OK, so so first, the law itself, keep your eye out for it. What will the Supreme Court do? They struck down something very similar before. It's a serious situation if somehow they give an inroad for the states to just uh, muck things up at the border. And then second, just you know, summarizing this crazy topsy turvy and now finished chapter where the, the, uh, Texas's ability to effectuate its, its unconstitutional law with this never been otherwise adjudicated went here, there, here, there, they could, they couldn't. And it settles now while the Fifth Circuit hears the, um, argument at they, they can't, which is really the, a uh, standing position it it always should have been in until a court and maybe even the Supreme Court determines that what looks like a very unconstitutional law is for whatever newfangled reason the um, uber conservative court might create is okay until then we uh, shouldn't have been entertaining the um, overturning of supreme federal law even temporarily talk to you later thanks for tuning in if you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.